morning, everybody. So it's a pleasure to introduce today's speaker, the only speaker today, <laughs> who is uh, Professor Stanley Tan from East China Normal University. He serves large numbers of families of poor and ordinary businesses. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give a uh, talk, talks in this workshop in this last place. So this morning, I'm going to talk about the computation of 10 numbers of family of curves, algebraic curves. And the, the second purpose is to uh, define some numeric invariants for ordinary differential equations. Because I thought some uh, students are here, so I prepared some elementary uh, materials. <coughs> So the motivation of my talk is the following two problems. First problem is uh, about the to find the new invariance for polynomials of the, with two variables, or a rational polynomials phi x y. So using uh, the method of uh, algebraic surfaces. So the idea is that we add a new invariable t, the parameter, to consider the family of curves defined by phi minus t. This is an algebraic curve. This is a family, one-dimensional family. So from this family, we can get some numeric invariance from the theory of algebraic surfaces. So the second problem is about the differential equation of this type. Here, p and q are polynomials. So this problem is a classic problem. So can we find some topological invariance for this ODE? So this is the second problem. The idea is uh, due to Pangre. Pangre said, in order to get some numeric invariance for this uh, ODE, we only need to study this uh, family of curves. If we find some numeric invariance for this family of curves, maybe we can generalize this to the ODEs. This is the uh, idea of Pangaris. Why this, uh, the, first, the second problem, the first problem is a special case of the second problem. From the, different, uh, from the equation, we differentiate the equation. T is the parameter, x, y are variables. So we get a differential equation of this type. Because P, uh, phi, is a phi is a rational polynomial, P and Q are polynomials. So the solution of this uh, ODE is the family of curves defined by this one. So this is our CT. And the F phi is defined, uh, is the family of curves defined by these equations. So the solution uh, of this equation, complex solution, are just the curves in this family. So due to this equation, the following two studies are equivalent. The study of ODEs of this type, the study of family, families of curves of this type, defined by this equation. This is why the problem one is a special case of the second problem. So unit phi is called the rational first integral of the equation, of this equation, <coughs> or this equation. It's the same. Uh, this equation usually is called algebraically integrable. Here, phi is the general solutions of this equation. Actually, Hilbert's problem <coughs> number 16 is uh, also about this equation. The first part of this problem is about the topology of uh, algebraic curves and uh, surfaces. Uh, the problem about algebraic plane algebraic curves. This is a uh, over real plane, the so real curve and the real surfaces. The problem is about the number of components of this uh, real curve and the real surfaces. <clears throat> the second part is about uh, is about this equation. So the problem is about the number of limit cycles and their position, position uh, of the, this ODE. 
the degree D here is the degree of P and Q. So the degree here is the degree of the polynomial. So here, but puts the problems together. Why is still to, uh, is uh, part of uh, algebraic geometry? The second is about the differential equation. Okay, the first uh, the first part, the problem about the curves is uh, the first part is about the maximum number of, of components for this curve C. This degree of C is D. So we have a, uh, there is a upper bound on this uh, number, the number of components. This is the upper bound. So the second part is about uh, the, pro the same pro uh, about the position of the components. The problem is also uh, we have the same problem for algebraic surfaces, real algebraic surfaces. So about the maximum number of components and the relative position of these components. It's the, first, the second part is about the number of limited cycles of this equation. Here, the equation is over uh, the real numbers. So the first part is to find the upper bound on <coughs> the number of limited cycles. The second part is uh, about the position of the limited cycles. This problem is uh, will as the um, one of the most difficult problem uh, in Herbert's problem list. <clears throat> Why Herbert put the two different problems together? He explained in the problem. Maybe the two problems can be attacked by the same method. What is the same method? The method of continuous variation of coefficients. The second reason is uh, the answer of the corresponding value of the topology of, uh, of family of curves defined by ODE, <coughs> by this ODE. So I, I would like to uh, explain the, this method, record the classical method. Here, we consider the topology of the curve, quartic curves, defined by this, these equations. If t is zero, the topology is very uh, easy to know. It's uh, two ellipses. If t is not zero, <coughs> we can use the classical method to get the uh, topology. For example, if we fix uh, this number, this negative number, and this t tend to from zero to this number, then we can know the deformation of the topology of the curve. So finally, we have two uh, two components here. If the limit is a lot negative, is positive. For example, it's zero point five. We get the deformation here. Let t from zero to zero point five we can see the deformation of the graphs. <clears throat> so finally, we get four uh, components. So this is the method of continuous variation of the coefficients. Actually, this method is also used in the complex case. For example, in, in the complex case, we know the topology of, the, of a line is a Riemann surface. This is the uh, why this is a Riemann surface, it's the reason. So using the same method, we consider the topology of smooth conic. So smooth conic is equivalent to, projectively equivalent to this conic. So if t is zero, this means two lines. So the, the topology are two fairs, uh, is two, uh, the fairs, two fairs. If let t tends, from zero to a non-zero number, we can get the deformation of the graph. Here is the, uh, the topology of the end case. So this is topologically isomorphic to a sphere. So we know that along a smooth conic, the topology is also a, uh, is a sphere. 
This is the local uh, deformation. We can consider the same, using the same method to, to uh, study the topology of smooth cubic curves. This is a, a torus. For example, we consider this family. If t is zero, this, uh, if t is one, this uh, is, uh, consists of three lines. So the topologies look like this. Deform this picture, we get this one. So finally, this is isomorphic to a torus, this one. So the topology of a smooth cubic is a torus. Using the same method to get the genus formula. A degree D curve can be degenerated to D lines. So we consider the deformation of D lines, we get the picture of uh, any curve of, uh, of degree D. This is the genus. Actually, uh, Pangaroo studied the, the, using the same method to study algebraic surfaces. For example, if we consider a space surface defined by this equation, Pangaroo's method is to uh, view one variable as a parameter. So we get a family of curves defined by this equation. So the surface is a union. Uh, fi finally, we get a vibration from a surface to P1 using this method. So by using stem factorization, we get a, finally we get a vibration from a surface to a curve. Uh, how to study uh, the family of curves by using the method of algebraic surfaces? <clears throat> the usual method is to uh, desingularize the singularities of the family. What is the singularity of the family? The singularity, singularity here means uh, several kinds. <clears throat> A smooth point of the family uh, it's a smooth, uh, it's not a base point. A, a single point, we consider a single, single point. Single points has two kinds. The first kind is the base point of the family. So this is the common occurrence of the curves. It's the common zero of F and G if the family is defined by this equation. <coughs> Another kind of singular, singular point is the singular point of one curve. <clears throat> it is not a base point. <clears throat> Other points are smooth points of the family. So this is the picture of the family of curves. This is the base point. This is the singular point, uh, which is not a base point. This is a smooth point of the family. Uh, well, I uh, introduced this uh, notation because this is uh, similar, uh, similar to the singular, singular points of an uh, ODE. We use this notation. <clears throat> to study the family of curves using uh, the theory of algebraic surfaces, the first step is to resolve the singularities to get a vibration. So the first part is, uh, step is to resolve the base points. This, then we solve the singularities of the fibers. So finally, we get a vibration from a surface to P1. Uh, to, uh, by using stem factorization, we get a surf, uh, vibration from X to some curve B. So by using the second step, we can assume the singular fibers are normal crossing divisors. Uh, this is elementary, maybe there's no student here, so I go quickly. <clears throat> the, the resolution of the base points are just the, uh, using the birational transformation called the blowing up from C2 to C2, defined like this. So consider the pullback, we get a Leo uh, from this rational function, we get a Leo rational function here on the red surface. 
This is the picture. This is an example to get the Leo uh, rational function. This is the Leo one. So finally, we get a vibration. And uh, this vibration has, uh, because x and the b are smooth, so the number of singular fibers are, uh, is a finite number. This is an, <coughs> by pulling up, <coughs> we'll get finally uh, a normal crossing vibration. Normal crossing means every singular fibers, every singular fiber uh, is a normal crossing device. Locally, a singular point is defined by this. So in order to uh, connect this problem with the uh, same problem of for ODE, we define some invariance. For example, for this singular point, we define this number as the eigenvalue of this singular point. So this is a negative rational number. Here is an example. So we So how to get the uh, useful invariance from the vibration? So here uh, we give some notations. Ft is a fiber. C is the base curve. T is the parameter. G is the genus of a smooth fiber of this vibration. And then F1, F2, Fs are the singular fibers of the vibration. F is called the relatively minimal if uh, the singular fiber contains no minus one curves. So if the vibration is a lump crossing vibration, this means all of the singular fibers are lump crossing divisors. And we can call F is minimal. This means Fi contains no redundant minus one curves. This kind of cur this curve uh, is redundant. Uh, if you contract this minus one curve, you get a steer, uh, a little vibration. The vibration is, is steer, normal crossing vibration. Then we contract all of this kind of minus one curves. Then we get a minimal one. Of course, the first topological invariance for the family is the genus of the vibration. So this is independent, independent of the resolution. And uh, it is also independent of the base curve, independent of the uh, parameter. The second one is the rank of the model way group of the vibration. This is uh, the number defined by this formula. Rho x is the Picard number, and the RFI is the number of components of the singular fiber. OK. Uh, connected. connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You, using stem factorization. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For example, if f is a rational polynomial, uh, if f is a polynomial, and the vibration is induced by f, then the model we group, the rank is a uh, invariant of the polynomial. This can be computed by this formula. Here, CT is the curve in the plane. The air CT is the number of components. What is N? N, N is the number of horizontal exceptional curves. This means if you blow up the base point, the minus one curve, the exceptional curve is not contained in the fiber. So this N, N phi is the number of this kind of horizontal exceptional curves. Uh, finally, we need a minimal, but in the resolution, we don't need a uh, minimal. Uh, oh, minimal, yeah, <laughs> here we need a minimal. <clears throat> because if it's not a minimal, uh, if it's not a minimal, you blow up, and this curve must be contained in the fiber. So this number is uh, independent of the blowing up. Minus one curve in the resolution of the singular, singular points.
Okay, some other uh, leomeric invariants from the vibration. Of course, we have three leomeric invariants, the chain numbers of the surface. But this is not useful because it is independent of the family. So the second one is the relative canonical invariants, uh, can, relative invariants of the vibration. For example, here is a the canonical, relative canonical divisor defined by this formula. This one depends on the vibration. So if the genus is one, at least one and the f is minimal, relatively minimal, then the canonical divisor is a left divisor. Kf is big if and only if the genus is at least two and the f is not uh, locally trivial. Locally trivial means uh, yes, every five or are you the uh, uh, Yeah, well, I have, we have low invariants here, but the invariants come from the uh, these notations. <laughs> okay, the little invariants. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, about the list left. Mm. Because this uh, canonical divisor is uh, very important for the family. So, for example, if uh, we can consider the exceptional set of this left and the big divisor. If the genus is at least two, define the like this, like this. So the behavior of the uh, vibration depends on this set. Uh, actually, uh, usually this uh, so this is very clear. This set it consists of minus one curves in the fibers. So from this uh, set, we know the property of the uh, of the canonical divisor, relative canonical divisor. Okay, how to get invariance from this one? So the invariance is the relative chain numbers defined by these formulas. So they are long negative uh, numbers, rational uh, integers. This one depends on the family. The chain numbers is independent of the uh, family. Well, the chain numbers uh, are not the, because the chain numbers depends on the parameter, depends on the base. So this is not, this a lot of the invariants of the uh, function phi, the rational polynomial phi. So this one, uh, a lot we wanted. So why uh, this number depends on the parameter? Because if you consider the base change, here is a base change, replace t by some new parameters. So from this vibration, we get a new vibration. This is the same family of curves but the invariants are different. You can compare the invariants of this one and this one. You, you can see uh, the, this invariance depends on the parameter t. So this is uh, not a good invariance for the family of, for, for, for this polynomial. Maybe the most uh, useful invariance coming from this invariant, this one. Here, this one is called the modular canonical divisor of the vibration. This is the relative canonical divisor by minus uh, the di di discriminant divisor of the vibration. So this is defined by this. So this comes from uh, the, com the multiple components. 
of the cellular fibers. Cirolo uh, studied this kind of divisor, and uh, he studied the invariance coming from this one with the property of the vibration. For example, he proved that if the genus is at least two, and uh, in this case, Kf has its aristic decomposition. Here, P is the positive part, N is the negative part. This is the can relative canonical divisor, a modular canonical divisor of the family. So we can define the corresponding codile dimension from this divisor. So the codile dimension is less than two, if and only if the positive part is zero, if and only if f is isotrivial. So this one is corresponding to the uh, various the isotri isotriviality. Okay, if P is a uh, left and big divisor, we also did load the exceptional set of this, this divisor. So we know the property of the, this divisor because of we know this. This is the result of Cyrillus. Cyrillus result is uh, related to ODE. In recent 10 years, um, someone generalized the Cyrillus result to, uh, to the case of ODE. I will explain it in the second part. OK, uh, from related to, to, the modular, uh, to the modular canonical device, we have some invariants. We call this modular invariants from a vibration of genus G uh, obtained from some pencil F. We, we have a map from the base curve to the moduli space of genus G curves. So in this moduli space, we have some uh, Q classes, Q divisors, kappa, delta, and uh, lambda. Delta is the boundary divisor, and the lambda is the uh, Hodge divisor. We get some, we consider the pull back to the uh, base curve. Then we get, we can compute the degree. This is a formally, uh, formal notation. So we get some invariants. This, this invariants are called the modular invariants of, of the vibration. Actually, this invariance depends only on the smooth fibers because the smooth fiber depends, uh, determine the the map so that determines the invariants. So these invariants are good for us. So we can also define the modular invariants for, uh, for the pencil F by using this model. So these modular chain numbers are independent of the uh, of the parameter, so they are good invariants for the function phi. So the purpose of my talk, is, uh, the first first purpose is to find the formula to compute this chain number, um, these numbers, this is modular invariants. The second part is to prove that these chain numbers are uh, these modular numbers are invariants of ODE. So this means we can def for any ODE, we can define the chain numbers for this uh, ODE. OK, uh, the fir first we consider the formula to compute this chain. Invariance means uh, <clears throat> from the family, from a, for a given family, you can get some number. Oh, for differential equation, okay. For differential equation, this means uh, we can define some chain numbers for these equations. Uh, 
well, yeah, yeah, this is the problem. Yeah. We cannot use uh, algebraic geometry to study all differential equations. Yeah. But we can use the idea to, to, to study. For example, we get some new formula uh, for, for the modular invariance. This formula depends only on the uh, list side. So from this kind of formula, we can define uh, similarly the invariance for the ODE. This is the idea of Pangray. Okay, how to compute the modular invariance, the first part. Uh, actually, Kodaya has some form nice formulas to compute uh, the genus one case. The first step of Kodaya's theory is to classify the singular fibers. There are eight classes. This is the rotations. So this is the first, first uh, class. This is the, the dual of the first class. The second class, and then the dual of the second class. Third, fourth. So totally we have uh, four classes. Uh, eight classes. From these singular fibers, Kodaira has some nice formulas. For example, the first formula is here. Uh, Kappa is always zero. And the delta F, the, modular, the second modular invariance, can be computed by this formula. Here, the, uh, this means the number of singular fibers of type two. So each singular fiber of type two has a contribution to, to this uh, invariance. This number is easy uh, to compute. It is a topological invariant, so it, it's not difficult to compute. The second formula is this, from uh, the first kind of singular fibers. Yeah, so it can be computed by this. The third formula is uh, by using the GI invariance of the smooth fibers. So for, for the smooth fibers, the GI invariance is a, a rational function of the parameter T, or meromorphic function of the parameter T. What is the delta F? Delta F is just the number of poles of the function. So in the language of algebraic geometry, this is the degree of the map from C to the moduli space of elliptic curves. So Kodaira has three uh, nice formulas. So our purpose is to uh, generalize this formula, to so compute uh, the contribution of a singular fiber to the global invariance. So here is the local contribution of the singular fibers to the three trend numbers, uh, to the modular invariance. Here is an example. This family, the smooth fiber, uh, if T is uh, generic T, this fiber is smooth. The GI invariant is this. So the degree of the GI invariant is just the degree of this one and this one. So the degree, the maximum degree of the, this, this polynomial and this polynomial. So it is 12. So this means we can compute the GI, this invariant, the modular invariant, from smooth fibers. We can also start, uh, compute this from singular fibers, because the, in this case, the singular fiber, uh, the vibration is semi-stable. The singular fiber uh, consists of uh, three lines. So each singular fiber is of this type. So we can compute using the uh, third formula, the second formula to compute the GI invariant. Each comp, uh, com here is three times the number of singular fibers is also 12. Uh, from this, we can see that the modular invariance depends only on, uh, on the smooth fibers. 
So it is independent of the resolution of the singularities. J is the uh, delta F, the boundary divisor coming from. Yeah, this this one. This uh, this is J, the, the number of poles of the J invariant. Okay, some uh, algebraic geometers to try to generalize Kodair's formulas. For example, uh, the genus 2 case, someone classified the singular fibers. There are about 126 types. From the classification, one can get some formulas like this. This is due to Horikawa and Xiao by using double cover. Uh, Xiao proves that if f is semi-stable, uh, the geometric meaning of S2, S3 of the singular fiber is quite clear. For example, S2 is the number of inseparable double points of the singular fiber. S3 is the separable double points of, of f. So this formula are for uh, the 10 numbers, a lot for, uh, for, the, GIE, uh, for the modular invariants. A well, semi-stable fiber is a reduced load curve. A double point, we consider the local normalization around P. If P is this, this, uh, this one, we uh, separate the two branches. This is the normal, local normalization of uh, F at P. So P is inseparable means the local normalization is connected. P is separable means F prime is disconnected. So here, the two are inseparable. This one is separable. So in a semi-stable case, the, the local contribution is quite clear in the formula. OK, in the general three case, uh, the classification is quite complicated. There are uh, more than 4,000 types. So Mosler has a conjecture in 1990 about the formula. This is his uh, conjecture. Uh, this is for the uh, 10 numbers. It seems there's uh, not for the modular invariance. Okay, what is our formulas? So our formulas, uh, we try to uh, generalize the first formula of Kodaiers, the formula one. So we introduce some uh, local chain numbers for a singular fiber. So we denote it by C1 square F, C2 F, and chi F. This is the local chain numbers of a singular fiber. This is the local contribution of, the, of a singular fiber to the uh, first chain class of the surface, second chain class of the surface, and the uh, chi. So here is the formula to compute these local chain numbers. So NF is the genus minus the arithmetic genus of the reduced part. This is a uh, non-negative number integer, less than g, a low more than g. Here is the formula. I will explain alpha f and the beta f later. Here, mu f is the uh, total mirror number of the of this singular fiber of this part of this curve. Nf is this. So this is the self intersection number. Uh, Alpha f coming, uh, comes from the singular points of the reduced part. Beta f uh, comes from the uh, multiplicity of the, uh, of the fiber f, the components of the fiber f. OK, this is our generalization. This is the modular invariance. This is the trend numbers. This is the constant part. 
This is the contribution of the cellular fibers. So in the genus one case, uh, this is exactly the Kodaira's formula. In this case, C1 square of any singular fiber is zero. And uh, cup F is, so cup F is also zero because uh, C1x is zero. Here is the local contribution of the eight types of singular fibers. So to the contribution to this one, uh, to, to second and third numbers, they are uh, integers. The local contribution, this is the local contribution uh, to chi O X. This is the local contribution to the GI, the GI environment or the modular environment. So here, delta F, is, this is exactly the coefficient here. It's exactly the coefficient in Kodaira's formula. So if the genus is at least two, we have some uh, basic properties about the local chain numbers. For example, the trend num local chain numbers are non-negative. Uh, if if the, this one is zero, it's equivalent to this one is zero. This one is zero. They are all equivalent. This is equivalent to F is a semi-stable fiber. So these local chain numbers mirrors the semi-stability. Here is the blowing up formula. If sigma is a blowing up at a point on the singular fiber F, we get a new fiber by pullback on this surface. So the, the relationship between the local contributions uh, similar to the surface case. So we have some uh, upper bound on this one. We call this the local canonical class inequality, bounded by 4G minus 4. We have also Miyaka Yao type inequality. Uh, if this is equality, even only if F uh, is this, the reduced part is a loader curve. So the multiplicity are the same, and the singular point are the simplest one. OK, in the uh, genus 2 case, we have some uh, less upper, bound, an upper and a lower bound. This is the inequality between the two environments. And then this is the uh, local and upper bounds. Because in this case, there are a classification of signal fibers. We can compute the 10 numbers one by one. Then we get we know these inequalities. If the genus uh, not two, any genus, then we have some uh, lower bounds for this and for this. And uh, we the equality, we know the equality. We can classify the equality. Even only if F is a reduced, uh, reduced fiber and the, the singular point are clear, one cusp and the some nodes. This means we can classify the equalities. Or also this one. I'm sorry. So we have a low, uh, lower bound for the first 10 numbers. Only a conjecture. For the upper bounds, uh, this is the upper bound for chi f, so our kind of type in quality. The upper bound for the chi f. And the, the upper bound for C2, we don't know.
for the canonical class in inequality, uh, which one? Uh, our formula, uh, our upper bound is 40 minus 4. Actually, if the genus is at least 2, uh, least, there are some uh, better bounds, upper bounds. For example, for any genus, we have least upper bound. If genus is at least 7, we have least bound. We can classify uh, uh, sigma fibers satisfy this inequality. This means the bound between this one and the least, this one. Uh, this one and the uh, and this one. Here is the classification of the similar fibers. This is why this is inequality. So we have also Miyaka Yao type inequality, like this. This uh, so we can classify similar fibers uh, near the this line. C1 square is equal to 2 C2. For example, if the, this number is between 0 and 6, we can classify the similar fibers. This is the slope, uh, slope uh, this kind of inequality is called the slope inequality. This is the slope inequality for us, vibrations. So we have conjecture like this. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I I will explain in the formula. Then you can count, you can know uh, what is the number. <clears throat> so we can do similar to uh, Kodaira's classification. We can define the dual fiber. For any similar fiber, uh, we have some in, uh, duality theory like this. From this, we have some nice inequalities like this. Okay, um, I didn't explain the details of the computation of the local chain numbers. But I can show some uh, examples to. For example, if we consider a family of curves defined by this equation, t is the parameter. For this family, we have three singular fibers. If you consider a base change of degree five, ramified over zero and one and minus infinity, you, you, you know the base change, base change curve C is a genus two curve. And, uh, from the vibration, we can get a new vibration here. So you, you can compute easily the modular invariance of, uh, the, of this one by using our formulas. Then the modular invariance uh, can be computed by this formula. Then from the definition of the model, uh, from the formula of the, because F prime, F tier is a semi-stable vibration. So we have low co local contributions of the similar fibers. So the, this invariance is equal to the relative invariance. Then we can compute the chain numbers of the surface. So here, the, here is the chain numbers. From these chain numbers, we can see that this is uh, on the Miyaka Yao ninth. This means that this one is equal to three times this one. So from your theory, we know the surface is a ball quotient surface. The second one, the family is also very simple. And we consider the base change like this. So we can compute the uh, surface of, after the base change, the chain numbers. This is the chain numbers. So it is not on the Miyaka Yao line, but very close to Miyaka Yao line. Because Miyaka Yao in quality means this one is less than this one. Or less or equal than this one. So for this surface, uh, in the first example, the surface is on the Miyaka Yao line. So the universal cover is a, is a ball, two-dimensional ball. But for this surface, 
It is very close to Miyake Yao Line, but it is not on the Miyake Yao Line. So the universal cover is not a ball. But what is the uh, universal cover of uh, this surface? So I'm going to uh, talk the second part, uh, the form, the chain numbers of uh, ODE in the second part. We go faster <laughs> earlier. I stop here for the first part. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? So I will explain the formula. Uh, what, yeah, in, in the second part, we can see some uh, simple. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, from this right by T, one by T. Yeah, and yeah. And then somehow you complexify it into uh, the two classes. Mm -hmm. Three of them, et cetera. And uh, you do it minimally. And then you just have to reduce the invariant. Yeah, yeah. You're just treating this formation. <laughs> you are right. I just uh, explain it. You, you complexify uh, using the usual way. For the parameter, you use P1. For the surface, you use P1 cross P1. And then you get the uh, vibration. In the form of axis outside, what is the axis? X is projective. Yeah. Uh, Can you give more information about the X? Uh, about this X? X, uh, X is S, uh, I use uh, the same, this means the same. So this is a family of curves. So if you uh, view T as the parameter, the coordinates of P1, and the X is the uh, coordinates of another uh, P1 cross P1, uh, P2, P2 cross P1, P you can compatify it. Uh, P1 cross P1, this surface is in P1 cross P1. Uh, sorry, uh, P2 cross P1. A surface is defined in P2 cross P1. Uh, P the parameter T is the coordinate of P uh, the, the P1. You get the complexification. So, yeah, from P1 cross P1 to P1, this is the projection. This projection induces a vibration. And the blow, pulling up the... Yeah, yeah. And you result the singular aspect of the inner system, in fact. Yes. I just explained the, the, the semi-stable reduction using this formula. Uh, it seems uh, it is equal to the base curve, the genus of base curve. In the first case, uh, is two, so the Q is two. In the second case, the genus uh, is QX is five. Thank you. Uh -huh.